Hi everyone, Tinkering Tech here. Today we'll be taking a look at the 8-man C880 dual dash camera. Seemed like a very interesting camera, so I wanted to get it and unbox it, set it up and take a look at it to see how uh, good it is. So let's take a look at it. Alright, there's a little uh, leaflet here. Um, I guess a thank you card. Um, you got the user manual. Let's see what else. So, this obviously has to be the camera. So, here you have one. This inside, this is the inside camera, and this right here is the outward facing camera. Right. And also, these are the cables. And the mount. So here you have a 12 volt uh, car charger uh, that you can plug into a 12 volt uh, in the vehicle uh, in order to provide power to the device. Uh, it also has a little uh, a USB connector as well so you can power some other device as well from this so it's not hogging up the uh, 12 volt supply or the outer in your vehicle um, then uh, it also has a mount it's a suction um, suction cup mount for your windshield and it also has a type C uh, USB so let's take a quick look at the uh, the camera itself uh, just to do a little walk around uh, the outside to see what's there uh, first, uh, we'll take a look at the port. So here you have a Type-C USB port and uh, this is a little uh, SD card slot um, uh, to record the video. Uh, and there's a little pen hole, hole here for reset. And then uh, over here you have a, a good size LC, L, LCD monitor to be able to see uh, what's being recorded. This is the inward facing camera, uh, supposed to be a 1080p camera. And then this is the outward facing camera that's looking out of the vehicle. And this is supposed to be a 2K camera. Uh, on, the, on the rim of the camera, it says super night vision. So obviously it has night vision built in. Uh, it's a Sony CMOS sensor. And uh, it also has a wide angle lens according to what it says here. Um, I think this is, uh, you can connect an external GPS antenna. Uh, that's interesting. On this side you have a few buttons. There's a power button, a menu button, a microphone button, and this is supposed to be an OK button to select, uh, I guess, functions on, on, the, on the camera. Something I want to emphasize very strongly is to make sure that you get a good SD card for this camera. Uh, the manufacturer recommends a class 10 uh, SD card. Uh, at least uh, I believe it's 32 gigabytes. Um, now I've tried other SD cards, older ones that I had laying around uh, that really did not, you know, have a lot of capacity, uh, much slower, and I had a hard time getting the camera to work correctly. Like I would record stuff uh, and try to play it back and there would be no images at all. So you have to use a high speed SD card, uh, class 10 SD card with this, uh, with this camera. So uh, again, don't waste time getting any, uh, you know, using another SD card or any type of SD card except for the class 10. Uh, I would put a link in the description below uh, on, uh, on the SD card that I have here. I have a class 10 200 gigabyte uh, SD card uh, by SanDisk uh, and uh, this works very well. Uh, 200 gigs is a pretty good size. Uh, you know, I've been testing and filming all day and I barely scratched the surface on the um, on the space on this SD card. Uh, so again, I, you know, I, I just thought 200 would be good. So that's what I got. To install the SD card is pretty simple. Just uh, put it in the slot on the slide here and just press it in and it clicks into place. One thing I, I wish the manufacturers had done was uh, to have the, the inside camera on a separate gimbal so that it can swivel, you know, uh, by itself. That would be pretty cool if they had that feature because uh, then it would allow you, once it's installed in the, in the car, to point 
the inside camera slightly at an angle to, you know in whichever direction you want it to without messing with the angle of the out uh, the outward facing camera so yeah I, I wish they would have done that but again it's not part of this camera but um, you know it'd be nice if they had that feature where this thing can move independently of the main camera the camera comes with a pretty good uh, and well written um, instruction manual uh, it gives good uh, good information on on everything that you need to know about the camera so please take a look the camera comes with a cigarette lighter a 12 volt uh, charger for the camera um, so uh, it's it's a pretty good size uh, cable it's about 10 feet long so it gives ample length for you to run the cable uh, uh, to, from the um, from the cigarette lighter and maybe hide it behind the dash all the way up to the camera uh, on top of the windshield or on the windshield uh, kind of like what's illustrated here on the on the instruction manual where you can run it along the side of the uh, of, of the um, I guess the side of the car all the way to the to the top here where you can connect to the camera uh, so anyway it's a good good size cable it also has a, a USB port on it so it doesn't hog up the uh, uh, the 12 volt outlet for itself you can actually charge something else with this which is pretty handy uh, on the other side you got a type C USB type C connector and this is a right angle connector so uh, this is pretty good as well because um, you know it, it makes it for it makes for a very neat connection where you know the cable is not sticking out it, it blends nicely into the back of the um, uh, to the top of the the hood wherever you're running the wire from in order to mount the camera you uh, the the camera comes with a suction mount for the windshield and for this uh, it's it's pretty simple to install uh, all you got to do is uh, there's a slot on one side of the suction mount that just goes in the uh, slot on the top side of the camera so you just insert it and slide it and it'll uh, it'll lock into place and that's that's how you install the, the suction mount pretty simple to do the camera also comes with a pry tool and the purpose for this is once you mount the camera on the windshield and you want to take it off sometimes it's pretty difficult with the suction on this uh, so what this allows you to do is actually pry it out of the off the windshield if you need to remove it just makes it a lot easier so pretty handy that they supply one of these things as well So keep in mind that this camera will turn on as soon as the vehicle ignition is turned on. So here I'm simulating that by connecting a, a USB cable that has that's connected to my uh, an, a wall adapter. So as soon as I hit uh, connect the power, you will see the camera will power on and it'll immediately start recording. So um, so again, this is simulating what uh, what happens when you power on a vehicle or turn the car on. Uh, so again, you don't need to do anything. It just starts recording automatically. As soon as the car is turned off, so that I'm going to simulate by taking the power out, it goes into uh, park mode where it powers down uh, just in a second. And then now it's in park mode where uh, the G sensor um, is what, you know, what would probably wake this up. Or would wake this up uh, that means that if I shake it or if, if you know if the car gets bumped by somebody then it'll wake up the camera so let's try to simulate that yeah there you go so as soon as I knocked on it it, it woke up and it's it started recording if I just hit that you will see it's recording uh, so again this is in park mode where uh, it'll wake up based on the uh, any vibration that's detected uh, and it'll start recording now it, it takes quite a bit of force to wake this thing up um, uh, from you know from the sensor um, so I don't know how good that is in a real-life situation if your car gets hit by somebody if it's really gonna wake up you know uh, with that type of force but anyway something to keep in mind let's now take a look at the menu uh, for the camera so here the first one is the resolution and again you can you can change uh, each of the icons by hitting the mic button and that will scroll between each of the icons and it kind of loops all the way around when you keep hitting it. 
uh, you can actually go back on the menu uh, by hitting the power button so you can use a mic button to scroll this way and you can use a power button to scroll backwards if you miss something here you have the resolution so to select that you would hit the orange button and here you can choose which resolution you want to shoot video at if you want to manipulate uh, the resolution you can manually uh, the next one here is the screen display uh, so let's take a look at that one uh, here uh, this shows uh, how you want the display to be essentially showing the images so what I have by default is picture in picture uh, you can have just the front camera only or inside camera only or split screen uh, showing for the uh, the display so let's do the front camera only and we'll see what happens so let's scroll down by hitting the microphone button and then hit the orange button to select and then go back by hitting the the menu button and that clears it and here now you only have just the just the front camera showing on the screen so you can change what view you want uh, because this would be what's in the vehicle and this would be what you'd be looking at all the time on the screen so that's a screen display uh, the next one is loop recording let's select that and for this one uh, you can I can get focus you can uh, select how long you want the loop recording to be uh, you can Turn off loop recording altogether, one minute, three minutes, or five minutes. It's three minutes by default. The next one that you see here is the G sensor. Uh, for that one, I believe this sets the sensitivity of the G sensor. You can turn off the G sensor altogether, low, medium, or high. And again, this, uh, uh, this is a feature where the camera detects a, uh, a sudden deceleration or, or a, a collision and it actually uh, records the last uh, clip that it saw and stores it away where it does not overwrite it in the loop recording mode so that it doesn't get lost. I think that's a pretty cool feature to have. Uh, the next one is format SD card. Uh, we're not going to do that but that you can select to essentially wipe the SD card and start again. Uh, WDR is wide dynamic range and this is uh, to manipulate the uh, the quality of the image is a time lapse here. Uh, you can rec you can set it up to one, two, or three seconds for time lapse recording. So for the IR light, let's select that. You can set that to auto. Uh, what that means is uh, if if the camera senses uh, you know it's dark outside or it's dark, it'll turn on the IR lights automatically, or you can you know manually turn it on or off if you want to. Uh, GPS switch uh, we're not going to cover here but essentially you can uh, connect a GPS antenna to this so that you can get better location information for the camera. Let's take a look at the speed unit and uh, you know in America they use miles per hour but if you're in a location that uses kilometers per hour you can switch it to that if you want to. So I'll leave it at miles per hour. Uh, this is the parking monitor on or off uh, and then the date time here, uh, you know, obviously you can you need to set the time, so I'll just leave it for now. But you you know what you, you can actually scroll and uh, change the time as you need. And then the language. Uh, let's take a look at this one. Uh, so there are a bunch of different languages supported, as you can see here. So we'll leave it at English for now. And uh, the screensaver. Let's uh, let's take a look at that one. Uh, so that essentially uh, is a timer to turn off the screen if it if there's no uh, you know if if it's powered on it shuts off the screen you can turn it off 30 seconds or a minute depending on what you want for the screen auto power off this one uh, shuts off the camera uh, after a certain period of time of uh, inactivity uh, so you can set that to one two or three minutes or turn it off I'll leave it in the off position where I don't want auto power off. Uh, key sound, uh, these beeps that the camera is making when uh, you're selecting different things, you can actually shut that off as well if you want to. I'll leave it on for now. Uh, record audio. Let's take a look at that. You can turn it on or off uh, if you want to record audio or not. Uh, the boot sound, yeah, this one I probably will disable because it is kind of annoying. Uh, and just hit off and hit the select button and that'll turn off the boot sound. The boot sound is the 
the boot sound is the that little chime it plays when it powers on so if that's annoying to you you can actually manually turn it off okay license plate switch um i believe this allows you to th there's another setting where, which, where you can actually set your license plate number so that your license plate information gets uh, on the on the image itself of the recording if you wanted to and here here and this is the license plate you can manually enter your license plate information so it's it's actually on the video if you want it to be there uh, video video encode you can use two h.264 or 265 what, whatever your preference is by default it's on h265 and frequency uh, for the camera you can set it at 50 hertz or 60 hertz i'll leave it at 60 hertz that's a default you, you probably don't need to mess with that and then you can also uh, revert to factory settings if you want to um, you know if, if you mess up the camera with the settings or whatever you can revert to factory settings by doing by going here to default and then this is a version of the camera along with the uh, software version on it so that covers all the different menu items uh, for the camera so mounting the camera onto the windshield is pretty easy all you got to do is push the suction cup against the windshield and turn the little knob and that'll lock it into place and then there's a little uh, adjust screw to adjust the pivot of the camera once it's mounted as well. Here you can see the camera turn on once the car ignition is turned on. Quite some footage from the actual camera itself when I'm driving. Here I'm on a local street and uh, next you will see uh, me enter the highway and drive on the highway as well during the daytime. Here I'm pulling into my local Home Depot. Uh, you will also see the uh, number plate overlay on the bottom left corner of the screen. Uh, that's just a mock uh, number plate number, uh, but I just wanted to show that so that you will see what it looks like when you enable that setting on the camera. Ignore the time, that's incorrect. I did not set it for these videos. Here, uh, this is the inward facing camera during the day while I'm driving. So it'll give you an idea on what the cabin looks like from this camera. And here's some uh, nighttime footage uh, looking uh, from the front camera on the highway. Here's some uh, inside cabin footage as well, but uh, and with the infrared light turned on so that you can so it'll have night vision. And here I'm simulating uh, what it looked like if uh, somebody came to the passenger side window. Uh, for example, if it's a traffic stop and you wanted to quickly pivot the camera to the window. Uh, this is what it'll look like. Uh, not the best quality, but uh, it's decent. It's better than nothing. And obviously you'll, you can record the audio as well uh, uh, during any discussion. So that completes a review of the 8man C880 dash camera. Uh, I think overall it is a good camera. Um, I would recommend it actually. I probably will start using this in my own vehicle. Uh, it's, it's pretty well built. Uh, it doesn't feel cheap or you know very plasticky. Uh, the user experience is pretty good. The instructions are very good. So I think it's a good safety device to have in your vehicle. Uh, just, you know, just to record what's going on while you're driving. Um, and uh, yeah, other than the, the, you know, having a gimbal maybe for this camera so that it can swivel, you know, by itself, that'd be great to have. Um, but other than that, I, I think it's a pretty good quality camera. Uh, decent for the, for the price that you pay for this. Um, so anyway, check it out. You know, I, I'll leave a uh, uh, link in the description below if you wanted to get one of these. So that completes the review of the Ape Man uh, C880 dash camera. Uh, thank you for checking out this video. I hope it brought you some value. Uh, I would really appreciate it if you could hit the thumbs up button for this video. It will help me out a whole lot. So please consider subscribing uh, to the channel and uh, please don't forget to ring the notification bell. Uh, again, once uh, you know, thank you again. Um, please leave comments as well. I, I really would appreciate that. Uh, you know, good or bad, I, I'm always welcome to feedback on how I can improve my videos uh, so that I can bring you valuable content. Uh, so once again, thank you very much for watching this video. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.